proposed public hearing for March 4th. And his request is under Public Act 210 of 2005, and basically it's just asking that we increase the assessment for a short period of time, which means a tax deferment on the improvement. So there's no reduction to the county or the city tax roll. It's going to create some jobs, and it's certainly going to create close to a million dollars investment here in the city. Um, you will be receiving in the next couple days by certified mail official notice from the city of these proceedings. Um, but I want to come over this morning and give you a heads up and have a chance to answer any questions. And I understand if you don't object in 28 days to move forward, but I think here by motion or resolution at your next meeting, you could say we have no objections and we can move it a couple weeks quicker down the pipe. So with, with that, I want to open it up for any questions. And then um, I will leave just a generic copy of what's coming in the certified mail for you guys to review. But again, it's just an assessment. Or temporary freeze on that parcel, the district being created as an outline of that parcel, um, but to fill that strip wall again with productive stuff I think is good for everybody and I think it's good for our community. Um, so now are you at liberty to, to disclose what the nature of the business is? Um, the whole 23,000 is not spoken for, but I will tell you that Health and Human Services would like to be part of that space. And we've got two or three local people that are having a conversation with the developer about potentially becoming part of that space. They're working with Lloyd Bowen, who owns the property behind, um, to build a parking lot that both the employees of that building and the employees of Gladwell Metal would share. And we're looking at extending the pavement about 50 yards to tie that all in to take the roads out. So, and then that's uh, already on our paving list, and that'll be going to council in about 10 days. I mentioned at last meeting that we would take an um, update from the committee on what was going on and that we would take and address a letter. I think it's a good idea. Is the Secretary of State part of the occupancy one? Yes, they are. Yes, and her staff, I and Secretary of State are the two for sure. So I've got about three local people that are having a conversation. I think we've got about 9,000 square feet left either for offices or retail or restaurants. I got to believe it's going to help, you know, to keep the hut and everybody. So I appreciate your help, and I'll leave this with Laura. Um, the official one should be here in about two days. And uh, just one last comment. Thanks, Josh, for your help. I think about four years ago, I think just kind of a gentleman's agreement, we would agree we would work together, the city, the county, and the housing commission when we had that other event like last Friday. And I appreciate Josh being out early and, and Lauren having somebody out early and us all talking and working together. Uh, you're doing a good you. job, Bob. I think we all appreciate that. Are there any other questions of this particular 210 agreement from the board before they move forward? Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Public comments. Larry. Uh, Larry Grell, Billings Township Supervisor. I have a letter here from. Uh, Boys Hydro. It's uh, not a very loving letter. If I got one for everybody, for I had that out. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. This is uh, kind of wasn't supposed to be passed out, but I have a copy of it. And I think it concerns our whole county. Thanks, sir. And one of the things in there is. Mr. Mueller is going to do some work on the dam. October, he wants to drop to four feet. Then he wants to hit us with a $6 million assessment. And if we don't go around with that, he's talking about getting a $2 million grant for tearing the dam off. Uh, I don't know if we have to get, like we did with FEMA, get all the townships together to work on that. But I think we got to start some work pretty soon because. We don't want to wait and get behind the eight ball on that. We couldn't agree with you more. And Tobacco Township's presently working with FERC. Um, and I was just at their meeting last night, so the, the most recent update is uh, Phil Clark from Tobacco Township was finally able to reach the assistant director of FERC. Um, we are moving forward. There should be a letter coming back from them as to some of the steps that they recommend that we take in agreement with what our thought process is. Okay. Um, I don't have all the answers yet. Well, none, none of us do. will, but yeah. as soon as 
all that gets organized and we can organize a meeting with FERC and some of our local officials, even at the state level, I've been in contact with Joel Johnson's office also. Okay. Uh, we will certainly sit down with all those parties involved. Because I have some real concerns there. Yes, I, I bet you do. And they have every right to be concerned. You want to be lakefront, not riverfront. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So, I, we 100% agree with you and we will get you involved. Okay, very shortly. I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. One little thing I got is uh, our township still has a lot of problems with GIS. We've asked for stuff to come down to our township. Uh, we've been written things, emails. We've done everything. Our clerk's here. He testified. He's done everything he possibly could to get that stuff to our assessor and stuff. We don't have it. I, I understand 100%, and if you can just hang with us for a few, we've recognized and researched where our issues were, and we have our new equalization director. We plan on adopting that contract today for approving it. Um, it will take us a little bit of time to wiggle through some of that, and I know we keep telling you that, but I, I think we've identified where our issues started. Because we had some people, well, one of our board members last night went to get information off there, and that's two years old. I personally will make sure that we try to get that fixed. Okay. So, appreciate uh, that. Thank you. you but we know where it is now, but it took us a while to sort through it. So. Any other public comments? Yeah. Yes. I'm Dan Zoom the Pooling Township Clerks. This might help in your search to find the problem in the town. Our main concern for Billings Township is we put a lot of money into getting the, our, our system set up to be able to use this so people can, can get in and find out the information about tax. Uh, when uh, uh, Gina came over to our township hall after I sent out a letter to you all a while back there, back, back in you know, November, or October, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, she, she told me that uh, I needed to make a formal request for this information which while she was there, I went and I sent her an email saying, you know, requesting this information and stuff like that. And I hard copied her one and handed it to her right then at the same time. Still haven't heard anything back on that. Um, you know, that's, what can Billings Township do to help Gladden County, because we're all in this together, whether we like it or not. Is there something that Billings Township can do to help? And if so, you know, we're willing to do that. You know, I mean, and, and maybe, you know, between the other townships, and maybe we got to start working together. I mean, it just, it just can't be you guys here in Gladwin and the townships there separately. And hopefully we can do that. And, I, and I'm offering my assistance if there's something that I can do. I'm not sure, but that's we, all. That's I appreciate all. that, and you're right. We have to work together. I think some of what the issue was is maybe my fault, perhaps, because we did split those departments up. Mm -hmm. By doing that, you have different people having to input different information on different systems. We have discovered where those downfalls were, so we should be able to fix that. But that takes getting our new director in place, getting the equalization department reapplied. Is that department that is the handling of GIS, is that funded on our budget? And so we're here, it is funded, GIS? Yes. Okay. Are, you, are you talking about the GIS? Yeah, yeah the GIS stuff. Is it? No. It's not, it's not funded on our budget? It's it's run through the Gypsy Moth department presently. So okay. there's a there's funds how we work that and if we work that through. Okay. Well this that's just something you might think about there. If it's not funded specifically for that, maybe maybe that's where we and I don't know exactly what type of work it entails, but this would be a benefit for the whole county to get straight out. And if, if it's broke, it sounds like you're trying to work on it. Just keep in mind that you know we spent thousands of dollars to set this up and we still ain't got it. So you know that's to to our knowledge, the worst township is you guys, I think. Okay. For whatever reason. There's a few others with and I think it had to do with some entry codes. And again, we're working on all that with the redevelopment of this equalization department. I'll, so I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll be in touch with you guys. If there's something that, that we can do to help, let us know. And we can Thank you. If we can't get this resolved shortly, we'll run it through county affairs and then have you guys come in. Fair enough? Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, if, if, I'd like to add something because I represent Village Township. I talked to Gina on a couple of different occasions. 
And I know that you had to be doing this better and kind of want to have that. There seemed to be a misunderstanding someplace along the line. Of, I keep they, I keep giving reports back that we're two years behind or she's two years behind. I, I'd like to know, and I don't know if this is trying to do what you'd like to put in the committee, but I'd like to myself find out we're two years behind the point. Gina, do you want to speak to that? Online, for our online web map and our land records portal, we started that, uh, we went live in January of 2011. Towards the end of 2010, when we did some of our final maintenance, there were some class codes that were not inputted into some of those uh, parcels. So they were not mapped. They are in the land records portal as far as the database, which is the tax information, which is what most assessors use, those parcels are just not mapped. So for a while, all I heard was, it's old, it's old, it's old. Well, without having anything specific, how was I to find out what the problem was? So through a bunch of research, contacting with Billings, I went out there, spoke with them, we addressed the problem. Um, we invited the supervisor here to this meeting here where we educated them on the process and why we were where we were. So now the problem's been addressed. We know what's wrong because we found it. It's just going to take some time for us to correct it. So once it's corrected, then we can move forward. But um, there's very few that is outdated on there. And it's just from 2010. There's just some from 2010 that's missing, but 2011 and 2012 are there. Either of which we need to fix 2010. We understand that, and we're going to work Correct. in that direction. Yes, and we're working on it. It's just it takes time. So. Is there anything else for Gina or Larry? Or, uh, thank you, Gina. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? I know Bill Rhodes is coming. Uh, he's on the agenda here. Mm -hmm. Jan, I see that you're here, and I was going to put forward on um, that SEDS list. Did you want to speak to, did you have anything to say? Yes, I wanted to come forward okay. and enlighten um, the commissioners on where we're at with Forge. And I'm not requesting any approval of anything or any money. Um, but as you know, uh, we have the recycling center at 350 North State Street now. It's been in, uh, we're starting our third year in March. We are in 501c3. Uh, we, are only, we are supported only by donations and the product that we, the, what we get from the product. What I have here is, um, the last listing from Pad Notes that give you information. Um, and if you want to file it back with me, that's fine so that it doesn't go in your recycling <coughs> bin, it doesn't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it tells um, what, how, you, how much paper we saved and how much went, did not go into a landfill. We could use your help up there. <laughs> Well, I can't sort that. You might, my, most of it is going by the trash. No, in my recycling. Oh, good. I'm so glad you cleared that out. <laughs> trash is different than recycling, I'll tell you. Thank Some you. people do bring their trash in. But we are open two days a week on Thursdays. And um, and our hours are on Thursday, uh, 2 to 6, and on Saturday, 10 to 2. We um, were formed, or got a 501c3 back in April of 04, and through a lot of discussion and no's and whatever that no one was really thinking that it could be done. Uh, Sally and I, because that we had some member, other members on the board, but because of ill health and everything, Sally and I, took it upon ourselves to go ahead with it. And through the graciousness of the Bedgrove family, we have the shell building, shell building on State Street. It is not the most efficient building, but it does serve a purpose. Um, and so we are very happy that we're able to do this for the community and for the audience. Um, our net comes and this is net tons from last year, is 128.94 tons of paper. And that's just paper. We, I haven't figured out the, the uh, 
tin and the plastics. Uh, but it does explain how many trees we save, how much about the pollution efficient gallons of oil dollars on the landfill expense, gallons of water, cubic yards of land space, landfill space, and how much energy we saved in that. The people are coming forward. Uh, some, <coughs> we had a gentleman come in a month ago. He said he would see us in the spring because he had a place to store the recyclable. But some come in every week. We have the people from the hospital bringing in their plastics and office paper. We do not have a truck to pick up the cardboard, so we don't get that. Uh, there was two, a couple of business out in Beaverton. At first, they didn't think it would pay off. Gas prices went up, but so did the cost of the recycle of the trash bin. They figured it out, and they load their pickup truck with their cardboard once a week and bring it in, and it pays them more than if, you know, the cost of the fuel for the truck and the driver, but they still save money by bringing it to us rather than bringing that trash bin out there. So we are coming along. We would like all the support we could get. Um, and for the township, I realize that you have your own trash bins in one earth, and some are recycling. But we do take the office paper, whether it's shredded or not. We take catalogs, books, and one thing or another. We have one person with the old books that uh, need to be cut. We cut the spines off, and they're brought back, and we can either recycle the newspapers or office paper. So we are coming along, and I just want to uh, enlighten, oh, and I don't know if we have, have paid this copy or not, but that's everything that we recycle. I don't know, Josh, is going to <laughs> And you are invited to come and visit us on the days that we're open, just see what we are doing. because it isn't something that you only spend two days or two hours a week on. I'm finding myself, uh, I'm living it almost. <laughs> but I do appreciate your visiting and I do appreciate all the help that's coming here. We are, there are about three townships that don't enter and I realize because of the distance and one thing or another, uh, and they do have the trash, they don't understand. Some don't understand about recycling is different than trash until they come to us and then see what we do recycle. So I thank you for your time and I hope that you will enlighten the other residents of the townships that you represent because I realize you're down to five instead of the seven. I recognize three of you. I have heard of Don, so mm -hmm. I know that you, like I say, more material coming in, it's more profit for us. Thank you. Jan, I would like to say my wife makes me visit you. <laughs> but uh, you are always there, and I appreciate, we all appreciate your efforts. As far as the SEDS, the Comprehensive Economic mm -hmm. Development that I mentioned to you at the Kiwanis mm -hmm. Club dinner the other night, that I think is due today. Was Bill still coming? Bill Rhodes was supposed to be coming, but do you have, I mean, on your wish list of things that you would like MCOD mm -hmm. to research for you as far as grant funds, and we don't have our own opinions on grants, but what would you need besides you need heater and well we need heat and one thing we're, we're trying to look into is a paper shredder we have small small businesses in town that their material that really should be shredded is piling up um, because they can't afford to bring in the industrial uh, truck to do that and if we had a shredder there we could shred it and then that would be put in with our office paper if there was a shredder there, we could take the counties up there and it wouldn't cost us to shred every year. Does so the shredder have to be in a paper bag or plastic bags? Plastic bags are fine. Yeah, because we do get a lot. We, uh, also, I should mention, we do work with the Arnold Center. Uh, they bring in about three trucks full of uh, paper or recyclables from businesses in town. Uh, and so we work with the Council on Aging with their tin and one thing or another. So we are trying to reach out to the community to bring her in. They are not charged anything. I don't know where they'll have to eventually, but it is just donations and whatever we get from selling the product. And we're working with Padno Company out of Grand Rapids in Holland. They 
had no target in Holland. Um, and so we've had a good relationship there in working with them. They don't charge us for the pickup uh, or the materials that they give us, uh, the gator boxes, which many of you might not be familiar with. There's a large four by four by four box ca cardboard that we put certain things in, others we bail. And our people there, people that are coming in, they keep calling and calling and I, isn't it about time to send the truck? But they don't realize that we need a lot of bales uh, in order to fill that truck. Um, so you have all the can crushers and everything else? No, I thought that we could have a can crusher. We could use the, um, the heat of some sort within the building. Um, we do have it covered in the bathroom and, and where the uh, water comes in because it mm -hmm. didn't and we heard the like, so. Um, but we didn't really, I didn't list out a wish list, but those are the types of things, yeah. The can crusher and the shredder. Um, and I'm looking at the, the shredder because it would really help the residents of the right. county. Uh, because we've had people come in and say, do you have a shredder? And I said, no. And um, I checked in, well, I just emailed someone last night. And they don't have a, one, but they're about $15,000, I think. Um, depending on what kind you got. But we would want one that would really do the work. Probably a more industrial type shredder, not one of the little, little ones that we use at home. What, what are the can crushers run roughly? That I haven't checked into um, because. Give me a guesstimate just for the sets. Are they 20 grand or 50? Oh, I would say 20 at least if you're looking at it. Yeah. Okay. And that would be a savings because what we are doing, I right now are depending upon our um, court-ordered volunteers when they show up <laughs> to crush the cans. And they do it manually. Some don't like it, but that's one of the jobs. Well, it makes fun to us. And I think that's you know, two of the things, that, or three with the heat, because that is one reason we don't get as many volunteers. If you come to see what we have, the building is large. We have one door open so that the trucks with the cardboard or big product can back right into the building. Um, and uh, that door is open most of the time because Sally and I don't know how many times that door will go up and down <laughs> without needing another repair. And so once up and once down, I'll, I'll be there on that day. And, and Jan does, they do make money at Forge. Just enough barely to pay right. your part timer so far, but well, we only we only pay salary. Right. We have two volunteers that are okay. truly volunteers. They come in they do the four hours, uh, but Sally, uh, I was able to pay. I'm able to pay her a small amount. It's a, not great, but it's a little something because she does come in. I don't pay her for all the hours she's there. Sometimes she's there until ten o'clock. Sometimes she's there at eight o'clock. She understands that because she's just as willing to work as she worked more than I do really, but she's younger than I am. <laughs> if you're not elected, elected Mr. just how many years have you gone back? This lady, I've been up here forever, but she's been <laughs> fighting that recycling just about as long. Well, it, um, it goes back up many years. Well, it was a uh, place closed and they started right. in about 2001 or something like that. As I say, I wrote the, uh, Paperwork for the nonprofit status, and that you can see, like I say, in 04, but then it took it moving along. We did have a truck that we collected papers from over by the high school, and we were beginning to wonder when my shed was full and Sally's barn was full, mm -hmm. where are we going to go and put this when the Grove family came forward? And they have been a blessing. As the chairman said, we all appreciate what you've done. And it is, but I, you know, if you want to come and visit, uh, just Give it a look over. Uh, we had one bailer we got with the grant, and the other bailer, I'm glad we had that so that we don't have to tie up the one bailer. The other bailer we got through an anonymous donor. Someone said, but it's not anonymous because I know, and I said, well, I had to cash a check. Uh, <laughs> but nobody else unless that, uh, that person had said. So the two bailers really helped because the one is tied up then with the cardboard, and tin, and the other one is for the plastics and the paper. Ma'am? Yes? Do you need help with grants? Yes, and I need a grant writer. When when I find out prices and I had forgotten about you, 
Uh, and so I will try to get in contact with you when I get more information on okay, that. Okay, I'll, I'll leave my number with you. Because, because uh, Marge Chamberlain did our yeah. first grant for the Baylor, yeah. but because of her health, she's yeah, she no longer able to do that. But we did get the Baylor to the uh, Midland <coughs> and Bryson, uh, Community Foundation. Yeah, Community Foundation, which was okay. a, a great deal. But you're looking at uh, about 6,500 that they gave us and uh, for one and then the other one. And so we're, we're appreciative of that because the first load we sent out to Padnos, I think we got about $600 profit. And they told us if it had been bailed, we would have gotten about 1100 And that's when we worked to get the bailer. So. Give me a call. We can talk about it some more. OK. Um, you are a 501 We are a 501c3. Are there any other questions for Jan? Thank, Thank you so much. And I appreciate your time. Um, I don't see Bill here. Um, Carol, there you are. Do you want to do your presentation? Commissioner Carl? Yes. Commissioner Walters? Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Wayington? Yes. Commissioner Burgo? Yes. Motion passes. And the other? The second one is uh, the 2014 budget application. Um, with resolution of the I move for approval. This will be moved and seconded. <coughs> Madam Clerk, <Burke. coughs> Commissioner Walters? Yeah. Commissioner Reed? Yes. Commissioner Winnington? Yes. Commissioner Burgle? Yes. Commissioner Carl? Yes. Is there any questions? Okay. No questions. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Uh -huh. Bill don't show up, don't Hello. have to forget. If you want to hang around for two minutes, I'll have these for you. Mm -hmm. I'll, okay. take, I'll take permanent copies. Okay. If Bill don't show up, don't let me forget we need to talk about the SEDS. this year, so I went ahead and printed you each a copy of, of all of them on each block. There's also a summary. Thank you. You're welcome. We just completed surveying on uh, January 25th, so it was a, a long year and we had to go through some tough weather, but um, only having the one experienced team I think was still worth it. I think it saved us money in the long run. They know what they're doing, where they're going, and uh, what they're looking for. So we have four blocks. We have one in one in Sherman, one in Sage, one right here in the city of Gladwin again, and one in Beaverton. And if you look at the second page, it shows <clears throat> a total of 756 acres. I do not have to send out the RFPs because when we done it last year, we done it with uh, multiple units and we did it on a multiple year contract, therefore giving us the best price possible. So I'll need permission to have the board 
chair signed the contract with our applicator when we get the fuel cost. Shannon, is this because the gold tree is more in the north than in the south? Um, it, it's just the isolated hot spots. You know, um, we've been doing it long enough, and actually, it's kind of nice that all the counties are around us treat so we get to really just kind of treat what, what flares up in our county. Um, sometimes up in Sherman, up there, because of the state land up there and coming in from Roscommon, we will get more acres around there. And oaks are their favorite, so if there are oak trees in an area like that, they tend to be in that area as well. But we get to just usually kind of treat our isolated hotspots. So. It seems like the north side of Pratt Lake and the city here South of Cedar has been an issue with. Yes, we did treat the city last year. Yep. And tend to pick up the city like this because of the park and that at a little bit of a lower level than what I would in another area just because there's so many visitors here. Right. So the egg mass density, the size and the population can be just a little bit lower in a, in a high use recreational area. Do you have any information on the on the uh, state forest that they're on? Or is, do they come in and look at that? Or? No, no. We used to, when we worked with the MDA, they would come out and do our um, and do our checks and our inspections and stuff. And now we have, because of last year, we have to go through the DEQ and the Department of Environmental Quality where I have to go through the MPDES permit, National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. And I had to compile the Pesticide Discharge Management Plan, which is this big, about 100-page document that I had to compile and keep up to date at all times in case they want to come in and, and oversee my, my program and what I'm doing and look at what I'm doing. So the pesticide that we're using and how we use it. And, and you need approval for the chairman to sign this? To sign the, to sign the contract with, to renew the contract with the applicator, yes. I would show you. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Gina, are you going to send a copy of this to the districts that are going to be sprayed? Yes. Yep. To each township, I will send them a uh, an overall map and then a, a map of just their township, showing them what's been treated. And then all homeowners are notified by first class mail. So. Okay. And then I usually put them on our county website as well. And then the last page you can see is our uh, web map and land records portal kind of update from 2012. So if there's any questions on that, please feel free to get a hold of me. I'm just looking at this right. It's a total of 756 acres countywide. That's countywide. That is probably the lowest year we've had in 10. I don't remember doing that well. No, no, that's awesome. I mean, that's good. You know, I mean, obviously what we're doing is working. Can you tell me the procedure? When I send out um, the letters to each homeowner notifying them that they're in that treatment area, they can respond that they do not want to be in that treatment area, and then I can remove them. And then they also have an option of waiving a 100-foot buffer, or I give them a 100-foot buffer. So it just depends on the individual homeowner and then where that homeowner is at. So, And, you know, a couple times I'll get letters back and... You know, I always call them just to make sure that they completely understand what they're doing. You know, it's already paid for, you know, what I'm using. And usually, you know, once I kind of educate them a little bit, they're, they're all for it and they want to do it, so. You know what seems strange to me in, in up on the townships in the city of Gladwin, the city of Gladwin has the second highest acres uh -huh. in the county. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then there's some other blocks that, you know, yeah. It's just they're, they're smaller and some are bigger and just depends on where the counts start dying off at. That's where I stop the blocks. So if the counts continue at a certain ratio, then I continue that block. And if they die off, that's where I stop it. Any other questions? Gina, I was just is this a process that is going to eventually just eliminate the gypsy moth? No, the gypsy moth are never going to be eliminated. They're just never going to. They can never be eradicated. That's why we have our program to suppress them. So all we do is monitor their numbers and where the populations are high, we treat, and then we kick them back and just kind of suppress them. Okay.
Okay, that's multitasking. So. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Very hard. Well, talk about food. Talk about food? Yeah. Have you had hungry? It's almost lunchtime. Speaking at the Kiwanis Club and the jam coming forward, you know, I, I thought we might as well add forage in there and see if they can find anything on recycling, which there may be, although, you know, as federal money and state money dries up, it's going to get more challenging. Anyways, but is there anything else that you guys thought of? And, and I believe the county, I'll double check and I'll make sure, I believe we still have um, 
the county building itself on there, if there's anything, any grants available for energy efficient programs besides the electrical one that I wrote for. The, the sports complex, they talked about traffic before we talked about that for a moment. Anything else? Okay. I believe we can move on to committee reports. If anybody has any, Commissioner Walters. Thirty uh, first. Johnson, uh, Beaverton City, Korea. Carl Hunt, uh, Beaverton City, Vietnam. Charles Cabencio, uh, Korea, uh, Gladden Township. James Jackson, uh, Billings Township, uh, retiree from the military. John Cleary, Vietnam veteran, Hay Township. Alvin Seeley, uh, Sage Township, and World War II. Robert Graves, Korea, uh, from Buckeye Township. Richard Levy, uh, World War II, Beaverton City. Lyle Emmerich, World War II, City of Gladwell. Gary Sanders, Vietnam, Barrett, Max Short, Korea, City of Lavin, S. Bill Childs, uh, Korea, City of Lavin. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Commissioner Carroll. Thank you. I've got a couple of things, Josh. Uh, you did receive a copy of the Gladwin County Zoning Department's yearly report uh, required by the Michigan Planning and Enabling Act. And uh, including that report is that the committee met 11 times once per month. We had a meeting in April. They addressed seven zoning issues, uh, site plan review, special use permits, amendment requests, uh, completed and recommended the board commissioners five amendments to the zoning ordinance, reviews, uh, Reservations for Billing Township Zoning Ordinance and Amendment to the Tobacco Township Zoning Ordinance and review the Isabella Master Plan, Gladden City and Billings Township Master Plans. And the Commission plans to continue working to make uh, zoning ordinances more clear and more user friendly and more detail specific to Gladden County for the future. And uh, I, I move for approval of the <coughs> report. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And also, uh, on the 31st of January, County Affairs did hold a meeting with the FEMA Task Force. Uh, Bob Evans had uh, scheduled a meeting to review the final preliminary maps, the hard maps, prior to the submittal for FEMA, and all the townships were invited. Originally, FEMA had 6,250 properties that were included in the floodplain. And based upon the findings from the final uh, hard 
copy mapping, it looks like when you be 40 to 50, uh, that will only be included in it, so it's a considerable drop. And uh, those 40 to 50 properties, the example being Buckman Township, they had 20 parcels in it, and they went back in and reviewed them again and threw 12 of them out. So that knocked that down some, they're going to continue to do that same with all the townships that have uh, any properties included in floodplain mapping. And we also received Carmen a uh, letter from Bob Evans that was scheduled a 2013 green project. And I don't know that the townships have received them because you can sure that uh, it's emailed to the townships. That's all I have. I just want to add the uh, say the towns and taxpayers a lot of money by eliminating it. It was over what? Four million dollars. Six million. Dollars. Six. It's over six million dollars to save the county a year. Floodplain insurance, so it's a considerable savings. Yeah. Well, from roughly six thousand parcels to fifty ish. Six to fifty down to forty to fifty. You know, it's probably less than forty at this point. But it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's a little bit. Yeah. And again, over a year in the works, but it was worth it. Township did a good job. Yes. Sir. Townships really went together, and everybody worked good together. Now, that may be something we have to consider later when we take a look at the dams out there. Too. Yeah, that's, that's why I brought the letter today. Okay. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in my that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Farrell. Commissioner Virgo. Okay, I uh, don't have any motions to make or any board action necessary. Uh, but you know, the Board of Health meeting in Harrison, Region 7D in West Branch twice, uh, Board of Health meeting in Mount Pleasant. Uh, the, uh, the Northern County uh, Counties uh, Association meeting, Grayling. I want to speak to that. Uh, Brown that Township meeting, Beaver Township meeting, Beaver City meeting. The uh, we discussed at length uh, a couple issues. One of them, the health insurance programs. In the uh, there were 33 counties present, and um, Brian Cote was one of the speakers. Uh, he, he said they're telling him 65% premium increase. Uh, he and I discussed, he said maybe more like 35. <coughs> it is something we need to factor in in all the decisions that we make between now and next year in the health care. And uh, I will be looking at alternatives. Brian is a broker like I was when I was at work. And uh, so we'll be able to find options and alternatives in, in case it hits us that hard. Um, <coughs> what we were discussing too is one of the ongoing problems that we have is managing to a budget. Uh, without any editorial license, uh, we're attempting to put together legislation to uh, re uh, change the funding of the court system from the current uh, system to direct from the state so that we aren't in involved in that at all. And that doesn't make sense. So we're, I've talked to several state reps. There were, there were four state reps at the meeting and one state senator. It's, it's got to be, we must need, you know, make changes to fix this kind of thing. Other than that, I've been pretty busy in all these meetings. And uh, uh, thanks to Dennis, uh, <laughs> there are two of us on the uh, Central Michigan Board of Health, and uh, I was uh, nominated by my buddy Dennis to be on the Finance Committee. So that's what required that meeting that we were down in Mount Pleasant. And you did find a shirt. Coming. Yes, I did. I found one penny there, <laughs> and I, I called out the Michigan State Police Attorney General and everything to take care of it. Thank you, Commissioner Brown. Yeah. Commissioner Whittington. Thank you. I attended the Billings Township meeting last night, and uh, finance personnel meeting, the chairman will be doing his report and bring up a lot of this stuff. Um, I have a Graham Township meeting at 4 this afternoon, Barrett Township meeting tonight at 7, so uh, I'll be making a lot of routes there. So. Uh, under the finance uh, matters, uh, Matt McCourtney, jail administrator, has requested that an expense, the revenue line be created for the purchase and sale of the electronic cigarettes that are now on sale to the inmates. Administrator McCourtney would also request that purchases be allowed without finance approval due to payment due prior to the stock being shipped. 
which we call delay in receiving the merchandise. Uh, the revenue lines that uh, will be recommended are set up is 101-000-643-000, and that's Emily Sales Cigarettes. The expense line will be 101-351-727-006 cigarette uh, purchase. Uh, we did meet with uh, uh, under Sheriff Hartwell, and uh, I would make that motion. Support. Yeah. How much is the purchase? Pardon me? How much is the purchase of those? Uh, they're based off of what we're actually purchasing them for, so the price of the inmate could, as we have to pay more from the company, uh, the inmate, that cost will go back out of the inmate. I guess $2 a cigarette was overall. Uh, I think they're paying like ten dollars a cigarette. Yeah. I think this first batch, we were able to get a deal on them when we bought this last. They offer monthly deals or bi-monthly deals. So it was set up more like a retail store, you know, whatever the margin was set up by. If the company charges us two dollars more than what we paid, then that goes on to the inmate. And I just want to reiterate, these are electronic cigarettes. If nobody caught that, we're not selling <laughs> tobacco cigarettes over there. So with that, um, there's been a motion in support. I believe. Yep. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Second item is the jail administrator is asked that an expense revenue line in the 286 fund be created for the purchase of phone cards and allow for the payment of this invoice without finance approval. Revenue line 101-000-645-000. Telephone card revenue. The expense line 286-000-727-002. Phone card sales. I would make that motion. Support. And I'll just say we can watch these and see how this goes, but I don't foresee any issues because what we're purchasing they're selling again. So purchase over five hundred dollars. It can be in some cases, but. This is something that I think we can watch over the next six months and make sure there's no issues. Uh, it's been moved and supported. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Laura Mabel has completed stages one and two of the EVEP, EVEP requirement for the state. Cost for the completion of these stages is $2,618.02 to be paid from line 101-101. 759-000. And I would make that motion. It's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Item four. Cadillac issue has provided the county with the medical reimbursement plan effective January 1, 2013. The motion is needed to allow the clerk to sign the agreement and presented and returned the appropriate filings to Cadillac. And I would make that motion. And I support. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Item five. Rick Jump, maintenance supervisor, has been unable to use his vacation and personal time prior to his anniversary. Total balance of 97 and a half vacation hours and 10 personal hours for a total of $2,541.30 to be paid from line 101 265 702 once approved. And I would make that motion. I support. I will just mention that we have talked with Rick in finance and we're going to look at another salary schedule for him possibly um, going with the salary to help some of us. That being said, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item six. Ray Hartwell, under sheriff of St. Pot. We have already put that down. That's the food service on the uh, yep. um, The under sheriff and jail administrator will be working on a grant for a camera system. The cost will be between $25,000 to $30,000, with MMRMA paying 50% of the cost. The board need to 
the board needs to make a motion to allow the under sheriff to proceed with this project without license. And I would make that motion. Uh, the, the, the remainder of that raid for the camera system was coming from, was, there was a... <coughs> We haven't pinned down an exact vendor yet, or we're just There was a combination of two different lines we thought we could pull. MLRMA was, I think they have a, a lot of money they can contribute, usually it's half of the cost. Uh, there is some uh, secure or phone vendor there. Uh, we have a technology grant to them, I think they have a seven to $9,000 balance. We're hopeful when it's said and done, we're, we may need to come up with a couple thousand dollars to offset the cost for a $30,000 camera system. So ours is in, uh, it's, it's Met its potential and it's starting to starting to not be serviceable. So we definitely need to look at some. Was there support for that? All support. When do you think you'll have maybe up in line? But I no idea. Um, I don't have an idea. I would uh, hopeful by the end of the year, if not midsummer, it's on the list of projects to get accomplished. It'll come back before the board before the purchase yeah. once they figure out if they get the green or not. Yeah. So. It's been moved and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 8. Under Sheriff Hartwell asked that the board consider a higher telephone stipend for the detective due to the volume of calls. The Finance Committee has recommended a $50 per month stipend, but would need a motion from the board to change the policy to reflect the new stipend. And I would also make a uh, move on that board. And we just wanted to make sure that the policy reflected that it's for the detective of the sheriff's department specifically. Uh, that being said, it's been moved and supported. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. And last but not least, a motion to sign an equalization contract with Bill Mason and to eliminate the part time equalization clerk in the treasurer's office. And I will make that motion. Support. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We missed something on here. Neil Hammerbach's contract. How did we miss that? I have it on the news um, yeah. You guys have a copy of Neil Hammerbach's yep. contract. And let me, I guess I can explain some of that. I know we've talked about it. I know <coughs> had some approval but being that one he is a CPA he's HIPAA certified he's had over 20 years of governmental experience he's been a governmental auditor including here for Gladwin County alone um, he's been a government manager he's a level one assessor he's got five years of experience with the BSNA program and he's a member of different multiple government um, governmental associations so at the end of the day, to have somebody out there, like our own personal selves, we use accountants for our own personal taxes and so on. It just makes sense right now with everything we have going on that we have somebody look at where our finances are, where they should or couldn't be, short and long term, are we doing the right thing? And if we're not, hopefully he can guide us in the right direction. And certainly he can help keep us abreast of some of the federal, state, and local requirements and we've interviewed them you guys have, have seen his criteria and he's an outsider you don't have ties to Gladwin County hopefully he can give us some decent recommendations and we can get him on board so that being said mm -hmm. I guess I would move that we accept the new contract support it's been moved and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, he's excited to get started. He's already done some work for us currently. And I think that should probably move in the right direction there. Uh, was there? Yeah, we did took care of Bill Mason's. There's a resolution. It's an agreement between Grimm Township and the County of Gladwin. Bill realized that 
and he told us straight up that he would not be able to assess for Grimm Township and be the equalization director for the County of Gladwin, so we contacted the state of Michigan and said, in fact, you are right. They recommended this resolution, or a, rec a blank resolution. At that point, we had Doug Jacobson review it for accuracies and so on, and this is what we have to adapt today so we can get Bill on board. So that being said, I entertain a motion. So moved. And maybe we should do this roll call. Is that going to be a writer to the best project? Not necessarily a writer. It's just an agreement between the township and us more than anything. Yeah. Um, it's been moved and supported. Madam Clerk, please call roll. Commissioner Reed. Yeah. Commissioner Jacobson. Yes. Commissioner Burgo. Aye. Commissioner Carl, Aye. Commissioner Walters. Yeah. Motion passes, thank you. Was that all you had? Yes, that's it. I've covered this says, yes, Terry, we sat on many, many finance meetings and personnel meetings in the last couple of weeks trying to sort this out. In fact, um, I realized Friday we, we had email issues, so we couldn't get all these contracts out to everybody, so we struggled through the weekend, and Bob, Brian, and I were trying to figure it out. And so you guys didn't get an actual copy of Neil's contract and the agreement until yesterday, and I apologize, but I did everything I could to make that happen. Um, we still are looking for a representative for NIMSAS. So when you're out at your township meetings, I, I don't believe we've had a rep mm -hmm. appointed yet. When you're out, ask about anybody that may be interested in Northern uh, Michigan Substance Abuse, be our local rep. Meals on Wheels are still looking for drivers, so if you know of anybody that has some extra time, maybe retired, I believe they get their mileage reimbursed slightly. Uh, Lauren certainly would work with anybody that has some time for Meals on Wheels. Maybe I should drop a few off on my road. You might as well coordinate that with Lauren, and while you're talking about your townships, you could drop some meals off. Tobacco Township last night, yes. Um, I was working with Joel Johnson. He was trying to set up some meetings and I encouraged him to get with at least Bill Clark and um, BJ Lang had some specific ideas, including, and not to be limited to only, but including a 200% bond, which I think is extremely important. Last night, Bill Clark had mentioned that he finally got a hold of FERC and that is not one of the requirements for working on the exams, <coughs> although it could be a local requirement. Uh, local meaning it may be possibly state, maybe county, and, and it may be in the best interest of everybody that it is county because sometimes counties have more authority than the state in these situations. So we will be digging into that. I just assured them that you know we'll do whatever we need to do to assist you. It is important to Gladwin County, and like our FEMA task force that we had, we'll all pull together and make sure that we get the job done. And I'm quite proud of that, and I think we all are. But at the end of the day. The 200% bonds for any dams in Gladwin County, if we could adopt an ordinance for that, that just means that they look at the individual that wants to do that work and make sure that they have the financial backing to get the job done. Instead of drawing it down and then, whoops, I'm out of money, now what am I gonna do? And then you're in litigation for 10 years while you have a river in front of your house and what's that do to our economy around here? So it is important. Um, I'll mention if I may, absolutely. for information purposes, there's another group that's in the midst of pouring now that's going to be coming forward to uh, help wherever they can with this situation. Okay. And Larry, yes, um, they, they've talked the last two meetings about getting the surrounding townships involved as we move forward with this, but just trying to figure out what steps we should take. And I think federal for right now makes sense to figure out what they're recommending for us to do. Um, and go from there. We'll get a meeting set up for sure, though. Also, Tobacco Township has this uh, Beaverton Fire Hall uh, issue, and, and I guess I wouldn't call it an issue, but it's been on the books, it's been in the workings for some time, uh, trying to figure out the financing and who's going to pay for what. It seems like they're moving ever so close to a final recommendation, and part of that, I believe, is going to end up being their building authority sitting down with an attorney to work out those final numbers and who's paying for it. Monies are there. Everybody agrees they want it. It was more about how much is in 
to do with that paper. Uh, that was discussed in depth at Beaver City and Beaver Township last evening. So uh, it, it is still, there's no consensus on uh, the, uh, the financing of the. I believe the void is simple. Although technically it's an issue, but I believe it's simple if the attorney sits down with the building authority and recommends, like, this is how this should break down. You guys pay this, this, and this. Recommend that to the, you know, an educated demographic breakdown of why you're paying X amount. I, uh, I think they can get over that. I attended the fire board meeting and brought in a recommendation from an architect engineer firm to try to get them to focus the, 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 the they don't have a, a a strong leader that's coordinated with all three entities. So it's a, they've all got their opinions and uh, conflict they have there to focus in. But they want, and that's what was discussed with Joe Sprang last night, he's on the fire board as well. And uh, I talked with, with Gary briefly about it. So they, they're all the same mind, it's just a matter of getting them to They're close. It's getting real close. B.J. Lang just get a, gave us a report this morning that Chemical Bank has offered a commitment for financing uh, with terms that they can afford. So that potentially could get us to the $850,000 fire uh, office. And I could break that down because I did the math last night while I was sitting there, which is nice with smartphones, but $350,000, they really wanted to contribute from Sabacla Township. Well, no, the combination of the three entities they wanted to contribute sixty thousand dollars a year, and at eight fifty, they're slightly over, but they have one hundred and twenty thousand that they can throw at it. So they're right there; they're at like fifty-eight thousand dollars a year, slightly under, very affordable over the fifteen years at two and a half two point seven five percent interest. So we'll see. It, it is. It's nice that Chemical Bank's going to work with them, and they're willing to. And it's real close now. Local. Yep. So it it really is. And I believe, you know, if the, if the building authority sits down with the attorney, he can streamline this whole thing and make the recommendation back. So, and I appreciate BJ's efforts there. Uh, what else? They had something else. It was brought up about natural gas for Tobacco Township. I know that Consumers Energy, Jeff Mays, was very active in getting natural gas up to Seaford, and that was an endeavor for them. Essentially, there's little to no expense from the townships, but the residents really needed to commit that they were going to do it, and they needed to make sure that they had enough residents to do it before they ran that line. Once that line was run, they were running that up 30. They want to try to tap into Tobacco and Hay Township, and maybe even more. So that was brought up at Tobacco last night. They're going to start doing some research there. I'm sure that Hay Township will try to do the same thing. So natural gas is moving in that direction. It's half the price or cheaper than propane. It does hurt our propane companies here, but yet it's a trade-off. So just know that they're working on that. Oh, what else? Tobacco Township, I think I got out of there quarter to nine last night. That, they had a lot going on. That was probably close to it on tobacco. Uh, there was some conversation at tobacco, although not as much concern, but it Buckeye Township meeting last month, there was concern about all the drains being dug, and certainly Seacord, if you haven't heard, um, notified that there's different drains being dug, who's paying for them, residents are wondering, and, and really, it, it boils down to that's not our, we have no control. You know, that's the drain commissioner, and people just need to talk to him, and, and he's done a good job of letting us know. So yeah. at least we know what drains are being dug and what he plans on doing. Where the townships are getting the money, I don't know, and I sympathize. Um, well, we had 17, I think it's $17,000 just from last year, so it's going to be spread over three years, and then more this year. We had a page and a half, I think, of drains that we'll be responsible for. So, but I, you know, at least you let us know so we can work that in. Um, my list of things here. We are still working on the our new mileage form. So when people are turning mileage into us, there, there will be a new form and there will be a form also for our non-emergency county vehicles. So any of the mileage that's put on county vehicles and or that we're supposed to reimburse, it'll be a more detailed form. And we are working on an emergency management bill. The, that was part of the agreement that he would be able to bill his services for some of these big accidents and that would be billed back to the owner's insurance company. 
presently some of the fire departments are doing that and trying to reimburse the county, but we should have our own bill billing those insurance companies for his services and items that he's used. And then we'll invoice that back. So we are working on that, although we're ever so close. I just didn't have it ready for today. We've had so many other things come up. Is there anything else we need to talk about, Terry? Not that I can think of. Uh, uh, do you need a Oh, I do need approval. Thank you, Chairman. There was a letter that we would like to send off to Chad Wurzel in regards to a position that will have to be opened in the Equalization Office Department right here. Did you guys get a copy of this letter? We had Baruch go fill out. I'll read it. The letter is to advise you that Gladwin County is added in a position of data clerk to the Equalization Department effective whenever we decide that to be, because we don't know that yet, but we do know that we're gonna have to open a position up over there. The proposed rate of the position will be the same as the clerks covered by the agreement with UAW 1543 an hour. We propose the propose transfer and incumbent of the clerk's position in the treasurer's office to fill this position. It is the intent to leave the treasurer's position, full-time position, vacant at this time. So. Really, this board's taken the position that we want to hire and transfer internally and try not to replace, and it Judge, just don't seem to happen. Wait a minute. You're saying that you're taking a full-time, you laid off the part-time person. <coughs> now you're taking the full-time person and moving it to zoning. I'm or saying that, no. What I'm saying is we're, we're asking that this be allowed in the event that that happens as an internal transfer. So if that does happen, if one of your clerks wants to go over there, then we have to address your office. Christy knows about that. But we do, and we talked to her about that. She knows about that. But the intention, the intent of the recommendation from finance and this board has been to do internal transfers as much as possible and not to be replacing people with full time if we could. Okay, I'm still It's not. been turned down by the courts. We've recommended that to the courts. We've had letters to the courts. So. I, I don't know what else to do other than make sure that we have it in the letter, so. But Josh, I'm still concerned. You're still saying you're going to transfer a full-time person from No, I'm not. What I'm saying I'm is it's a letter here asking okay. that they open up a position over there okay. in the Equalization Department at the amount of fifteen forty-three an yeah. hour for a data clerk. Okay. We're recommending that it be a transfer from within. That's what the letter states. It's actually and, Okay. Well, we'll have to fix that, but... In the event that somebody was to leave your office, uh -huh. we had conversations with Chris, Christy at our last finance meeting, that we would replace that individual. Okay. Most likely not with full time, but three quarter time. And she's aware of that. She's aware of that. And I think that's her choice, not ours or anybody else's, but we told her that. Uh, yeah. so we right. That being said. It's 1614. Yes, it's the correct solution. So we just need to fix that. That's probably on the old contract that Bruce was reading off of. And approval send it? Yeah, well, we feel that we should have approval. Send it. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We'll just fix that for you. And the last thing, um, as we do try to listen, and we tried using the bid core before, although we was having some issues. One, I think Carmen's computer is from 1976, because I can't even forward her stuff from my computer. But I bid, fairly new then. Right. <laughs> I, I haven't bothered Bob. But bid core is, it's a uh, auction, online auction, and it's 3.5% of the sale of our vehicle. I tried Craigslist. We ended up with a few people interested in our vehicles on Craigslist. I snapped pictures. I put them on. That necessarily didn't pan out. So do we want to try bid for as another option, at least once at 3.5% now, snap pictures, and I'll try that. And we can at least try and see what happens. So I'll, yeah, we'll go back to that. If I have to do it on my computer, I can just, we'll, we'll figure that out. But, all right, so I'm going to do that next. I think that's essentially all I have.
Is there anything else from the board? Anything from the public? Move to receive and file. If the move is supported, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The move second, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Six listen, I'll sign that.